Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Um, I'm suffering my third sinus infection this summer, so um, my, my ears are kind of tunnel vision. So if, if you can't hear me, please let me know. Is this on? Is that better? <clears throat> okay, uh, again, John Barlett um, with the Census Bureau in Dallas. Um, I am a geographer, and it's, it's a pleasure to be here. I want to thank HGAC for inviting us to present today. Uh, especially Meredith Alberto um, for setting this up and um, letting me come down here. Today I'm going to talk about uh, census data in GIS. And um, <clears throat> this isn't normally something that in our Dallas office we do. We're not a, um, a group that um, gives presentations like this typically. Um, we have to work with our data and we have to work with our GIS data. So um, we try to help folks where we can, but we also recognize that HGAC and a lot of other organizations take our data and, and do some pretty good things with it. The number one question uh, that we've been getting lately back in Dallas is, <clears throat> um, we know the data's out there. Um, we know that there's 2010 geography data. How do we map it? How does my city take blocks for, um, say, Tomball City, and create map of population? How does my city map percent Asian for tracks in Montgomery County? So that's the number one kind of, of question that we get back in our office. So I've kind of geared this presentation um, to, to try to answer that question, try to point you to where you can get the census GIS data and also where you can get the actual census data and integrate it with the GIS. How many of you here are, are GIS folks? Okay, how many of you work with census data? Okay, excellent. So the first thing we're going to talk about is, is 2010 census GIS data, um, more specifically tiger line shape files. Where do we get them? And I'm going to show you how to download Harris County census tracts. Where do we obtain the 2010 census data, the actual data that was tabulated to the 2010 geography? Um, I'm going to show you how to find 2010 census data tables. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the American Fact Finder 2. And um, again, we're going to download Harris County census tract um, using the American Fact Finder 2. And then finally, we're going to integrate the census tract shape file with the census data. Has there any, is there anyone here that has not been to our website? Everyone's familiar with the census website. So I'm looking for 2010 census GIS data, www.census.gov. Midway down the page, there's a section called geography. If I click on tiger, that takes me to the Census Bureau's GIS data. From the 2010 census tiger line shape files main page, there's a 2010 tiger line um, section down. Uh, if you click on that, that will take you to another page uh, where there's 2010, more information on 2010 census tiger line shape files. Two ways to download our, our shape files, one through a web interface, one through an FTP site. And I'm going to real briefly show you how to download them through the web interface. Okay, so we, we click on that link, uh, select a layer type, and in this instance, we're going to choose census tracks. We're going to select 2010 census tracts for Texas. And we're going to download them for Harris County. Okay, Very simple. Um, you need GIS data for, for 2010 census areas for the areas that we tabulated the 2010 census data. That's how you go out and find it. Okay, any questions? Pretty simple. Um, so we need to map data based on the 2010 census. So I've shown you how to go out and get the GIS files. Um, how do I get census data? The, the link there shows uh, where, where we have our various census data products. Um, it's called the Census 2010 at a Glance, and we have that as a handout. Uh, this outlines all the data products that are coming out, all the data products that have come out, uh, kind of gives you a, a synopsis of what they all are and, and, and what they mean. 
Um, I, by no means, am a data expert. Um, but we do have people in Dallas that are data experts. And there are Dallas Partnership and Data Services. So if you have a question about what kind of data you need, um, you know, do I need summary file one? Do I need the redistricting data? Do I need the American Community Survey? Those are the folks to ask. If you need help with the American Fact Finder, um, can the American Fact Finder do what you need it to do? Can it get you the data that you need? They're the folks to ask. And their number is 214-253-4481. And it just happens that they will be at Rice University next week. So on September 22nd, uh, from 9 to 12, uh, the data folks will be at Rice University giving a full day presentation on our data. And I believe we have a handout uh, with that information. Uh, it's the end of the fiscal year. Um, there's a lot changing with the Census Bureau, so um, it may be a long time before any of our people get back out on the field and, and do a training. So I'd, I'd urge anyone that wants to learn more about the data to go to that workshop. Okay, sorry, we're on a, it's, there's a two second delay on the slide sometimes. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, um, when someone calls our office, um, they want to map data, they want to map tiger data using, using our census information. Uh, the first thing I try to do is direct them to HGAC. Um, I try to direct them to the state data center, but a lot of times uh, the specific information that they need, um, we in our office or they need to go out and put that data together. From our website, there are really two main methods to obtain census data. One is to download and process the raw data tables. Um, the pros to doing this are you can manage large data sets. Uh, these data tables contain all geographies within one database, but they are very large files. Um, the raw data tables do require relational database software, and there's, there's some heavy processing time involved. The second method for obtaining 2010 census data is through the American Fact Finder. Uh, the pros are it's a very quick uh, query and download. I'm not saying that the American Fact Finder is easy. I'm saying that once you, once you know how to use it, you can get the data, query it, and download it very quickly. Uh, the cons are um, is you cannot download large data sets. For instance, if I try to, try to query Harris County census blocks, I'll get an error. Okay, so you know, we know where to get our census shape files, we know where to get the GIS data, and these are the two main ways to get census data from our website. <clears throat> I'm gonna focus on the American Fact Finder, but let me just kind of give you a picture of, of what's involved in going out and getting uh, the raw data. www.census.gov, and I'm gonna choose 2010 census. Uh, from that page, I'll choose data. And just for an example, I'm going to select download summary file one. Has, any, has anyone already done, has anybody worked with summary file one already? Have they downloaded it? Okay. So when I choose to download summary file one, <clears throat> it takes me to an FTP site. In that FTP site, I can select Texas and download the entire summary file one data set for the state of Texas. I can also download uh, a 2003 or 2007 access database. Um, we call these databases access shells. And they are basically um, formatted to import and house the data from summary file one to make, to make things easier. And then if we, we go to the top of the FTP site, <clears throat> there's a how-to to download the summary file data tables and import them into the access databases. Okay. Real quickly, um, I'm not gonna do this live, but just to show you, um, 
when you download any of our raw data files, the summary file one, the redistricting data sets, um, they come in flat um, delimited files. And there's generally two files. One is a geography file, the TXGO 2010, the other is a, is a data file. And there's multiple data files for each data set. In this, in this example, what I've done is I've, I've got the Texas Geo file, the data file, and I'm querying out State 48, which is Texas, County 201, which is Harris, and I'm setting the block uh, query expression to is not null. So this is going to return all of the census blocks for Harris County, and it's going to return the population. Okay, within that same query, I can enter what's called a summary level. Every geography has a summary level, and summary level 140 will pull block groups. And then within the same database, I can enter 150 and pull census tracts. Um, basically, I'm trying to show you that, you know, that there's some work involved in working with our raw data. Once you set up a relational database, um, you have all the information avail avail excuse me, available to you in one file. So within this one database, I can pull um, every geography and I can pull hundreds of different data, data sets. Okay, are there, are there any questions? Yes? So in, these, uh, in this data set... Oh, I'll give you the mic. Okay. So, uh, in this data set, would you, do you, have you guys inserted an identifier to put it uh, to link it to the GIS data? Um, what we would need to do here is we need to truncate the state, county, and tract, and that would give us what we needed. <clears throat> in in the tract GIS file, there will be a, a geo ID, which right. will be the tract number. If I create a new expression here and I truncate or I append state, county, and tract, that yeah, will yeah. that will give me my identifier. Because each one's got part of the ID, right? Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. The, the the linking ID is not inherently built into this file. It's something I'd have to create, but all the information is there to do that. Okay. Any other questions? So let me, let me just back up and summarize. Um, you know, we, we can go out and get our GIS files, and one of, the day, one of the ways we can build this data set is going out and getting the raw data tables using a relational database system uh, to get the information we need. The second way to get our, our census data is through the American Fact Finder. And if you guys are like me, this has frustrated you over and over. Um, it still frustrates me. Um, but the American Fact Finder is, um, once you learn to use it, it's, it's a way to quickly get some information. Um, so again, www.census.gov, I'm going to select American Fact Finder. Now the, the Census Bureau's American Fact Finder is going through a transition um, Fact Finder 2 contains the Census 2010 data. Uh, fact, the older Fact Finder contains the American Community Survey, uh, the economic censuses, and the population estimates. Um, at some point in time, um, they're going to transfer all of the information to the American Fact Finder 2. If they could only make the American Fact Finder 2 work like the first one, then that would, that would be better. But um, mm. So I'm going to select Fact Finder 2. And you know, one of the ways I've learned to, to query the data I need is, is going strictly to the geography search. So under topics, I'm going to select geographies. And I'm going to select all tracks within Harris County, Texas. And it's a simple expression. <clears throat> When I click go, the geography results are going to return um, potential matches to that query expression. So the first match is all census tracts within Harris County, Texas. That's exactly what I wanted. So I'll click that. I'll click add. 
And what that does is it, it adds the information up into your selections in the top, uh, top left corner. Okay, so at this point I've got geography and now I need to go out and get some data for that geography. Okay, so let me go back. Um, after I add the information, I'll close the, the select geographies window and then I'll get a list of data. Um, the default screen is going to list uh, pretty much all the data that could exist for that geography. Um, the 2010 data will be listed first, um, so what I'm going to do is just select, let me back up one. <clears throat> I'm going to select data set, and then I'm going to select 2010 demographic profile summary file. And that will narrow the list of selections to me. So now it's narrowed the data set by the type of data set that I want. From here, I'll, I'll check profile of gen general population housing characteristics 2010, the DP1 table, and simply click <coughs> download. Okay, have any of you done this, done queries like this? Okay, okay. Um, you know, many of you are probably better at it than I am. But again, if, if you want to learn more, I'd urge you to go to, um, go to Rice next week. They've got a lot of advanced ways to, to mine the data. So the next step is I'm going to download that data. Um, I'm going to open the data uh, within Excel. Um, within that, that zip file, there's a, a CSV or comma delimited file. I'll extract that CSV file, um, and this is what I get. I open that file in Excel, and for those of you that use GIS, you know that there's a lot of extraneous information here, um, so we need to kind of, kind of trim this file down so that our software can read it. Basically, I'm going to delete uh, all the information in red. Um, in order for my Excel file to be read in ArcMap, um, I need a field name for every field. Uh, I don't need all the other information. Just to keep this simple, I'm going to strictly, um, we're just going to focus on population. Uh, the far right-hand corner, the S001 field, sex and age, total population, that's the only variable we're going we're to be concerned with, just to keep it simple. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm going to delete the red areas. Um, I don't need the GOID, the first GOID field. I don't need the geo name, the, the census tract. It doesn't really help us, so I'm going to delete that information. Okay. And once I do that, I'm left with the ID2 field and a, a number field, which is the population. Hmm. Okay, so from here I'll create some meaningful field names. We'll, we'll call the, um, the tract ID, geo ID, and I'll rename the B field to population. Okay. Can any of you tell me, um, tell me a, a potential issue here? If I take this Excel file as is, and I add this worksheet into, into ArcMap, and I try to join it to a census tract shape file, is there, is there a potential issue here? Yes? It could be that the, uh, the shape file doesn't record the GOID the same way. Correct. Correct. The GOID in the census shape files is a, is a string field. Uh, this is a numeric field. And what I've learned is if I, if I try to convert this, this A column, this whole column into strings, ArcMap still, still views it as a number. So if I was to format cells A2 all the way down and make them a string, I bring it into ArcMap, it still sees it as a number. So I can't join that to the GOID in my track shape file. So what we've learned is if you insert uh, a couple columns, and I'm going to simply enter an apostrophe in B2. <clears throat> and I'm going to fill that apostrophe all the way down. So column B is going to be a series of apostrophes. Okay. 
I'm going to calculate my C field as B2, which is the apostrophe, truncated by A2, which is the GOID. And I'm going to fill that all the way down. So this technique, if, if I were to add this worksheet into ArcGIS now, it's going to recognize it as a string every time. It's, it's a little bit of work, but if, if, if you do this, it, it tends to work every time. Okay, are there any questions? So that, that, this is one of the big problems with the American Fact Finder. When the data comes out, um, there's often manipulation that needs to happen before we can bring it into the GIS. I have a question. Yeah. I'm a reporter, so I'm very dumb about this. Um, what is an ARC map? Okay, ARC map is the, the viewing interface to ArcGIS. It's where you would actually see the map data. So if you look at the map on the wall, it's, it's a screen where you would see the geographic data. So we're, you know, if you're looking at your computer software, that's what you'd see. Okay, any, other, any other questions? No questions? Okay, so now, um, now I can add both my shape file, which we downloaded at the beginning, unzipped it, and I can add my Excel file worksheet into ArcMap. Now we can, let me back up. Okay. Um, after I created that, that conversion, I added the apostrophe to the beginning of my <clears throat> GOID field. Um, I gave the fields names. So I called B qualifier C GOID underscore string, since it's, it's a string version of the GOID field. Now I can bring the shape file and the Excel file into ArcMap. And ArcMap will allow us to join the Excel file to the shape file based on the GOID 10 field in the shape file and the GOID string field in the Excel file. Okay, and now we can create a 2010 census data map for tracks in Harris County. Okay, are there any, any questions? Again, yeah. another question. Sure. Is there a list of um, six tracks and, and what they refer to uh, geographically? You need a definition? Uh, definition, right? I mean, is there a compendium of where tra census tracks, maps, tra census tract maps are, are where they went to and everything? Like, if I went before all the census maps, they uh, no, yeah, or, or, yeah, um, when I get done here, because it took about five minutes to bring the PowerPoint up, when I completely close down, I'll go to the website and show you. Okay, um, I didn't want to leave the PowerPoint because the, the PowerPoint is taking about five minutes to load, so I'm actually going to go through the entire presentation, and then we'll try to do some interactive things, um, technology permitting. So. So what we'll, I'll go into the American Fact Finder and we'll try to download blocks for Tomball City. And this is, again, just an example of the end product of downloading uh, a, a block shape file for Harris County and getting some population data for Tomball City and integrating it together. We can create a map. Okay, we're not done. So keep eating your lunch or if you're done, just listen. Um, Real quickly, again, um, I'm in the geography section with the Dallas Census Office. Uh, phone number is 214-253-4490. Um, again, we, this isn't something that, that the census offices are mandated to do, but um, we in Dallas, we work with the data. We have to create maps. Um, so we've, we feel like we're, we're fairly proficient both with the data and the, the tiger information behind it. So if you have any questions, please give me a call. Uh, again, 214-253-4490. Um, go to the HGAC website if you're in this area. If, if they don't have it, um, we have special databases set up where we can 
Um, I've got some geodatabases where we can run scripts and, and pull blocks by city with data. We can pull tracks by city. Um, so we, we definitely can help anyone that, that needs help. And again, our, our partnership staff at 214-253-4481. Okay, and, and like I said, we're not done. We're just kind of done, but we're not, we're not really done. Um, we're gonna do a quick exercise. Um, if you look at this map, this, this is the, the census offices as they exist. Hmm. So take a quick look at this map and let's look at the next map. Does anyone see any differences? Yeah, that, that does not look good for me, does it? <laughs> um, in 2013, uh, the Dallas office will close. So um, <clears throat> due to federal funding cuts, um, they've gone from 12 regional offices to six. So um, the census will still exist. Uh, we'll still do what we do, um, but you will need to call Denver. And I just want to make everyone aware of that, and that'll take place in 2013. Um, as far as I know, everything that we do, all the services that we can provide, uh, we will up until 2013. Um, although our, our travel funding will be pretty much over at the end of September, um, we can still help you over the phone. The data ship folks, they'll, they'll be able to answer questions. They may be able to do webinars and things like that. So um, just to let you know. Are there any, any questions? Everybody had, you guys eat in the back? Okay, everybody's, everybody's well fed? Okay. So let me see if we can, if we can get the internet going. And while that's opening, you know, uh, I've been talking pretty much about 2010 data. Um, you know, there's also the American Community Survey, which has taken over the long form. There's a ton of information out on the American Community Survey. Um, you know, we're constantly putting out data. So if you have questions about, about the ACS, call the partnership folks. If you need help mapping it, uh, give us a call, and we'll help you. Uh, work with you to get the data you need and the, the tiger shapefile data that you need. We are a federal agency. We do not make things easy. So um, we, we want to help where we can. Okay, uh, just to address this gentleman's question, we're, we're back to www.census.gov. Um, you know, we can go to Tiger. What I'm going to do is go to Maps. And Map Products. And from here, um, we have a, a wealth of information on 2010 geography maps. So there's census block maps. There's census track reference maps, school district maps. Um, let me see how, how quick this works. So we can select census track reference maps, select Texas. And now I can't vouch to the quality of these maps, but they are out here. Um, we'll select Harris County. And there's, there's always an index map, which is 000, and then the, the remainder of the maps will refer to those indexes. Um, just of my fear, I'm going to shut the laptop down. I'm not going to open one of the PDFs. So. Does that answer your question? So th this is a way that you could, you could see the boundaries of, of Harris County, the, the census track boundaries. All right. But there's no way to do it as sort of like a reference manual. Which if I want to look up all the tracks in Bel Air, could I click on something that says Bel Air and show me a group? Yeah. Tracks are... Um, Tracks aggregate in the counties. They don't. They don't correspond to city boundaries. So, um, 
you know, from the American, you know, from, from the American fact finder, we can query all blocks in the city because the blocks will aggregate to the city limit boundaries, but the tracks are a county aggregated, so we really can't, um, I don't know of a way where you can, you can call a city and find out, find out the tracks because for most cities, they're the out, the outer line boundaries can be split by a census tract. Okay, so let me let me go back to census.gov and we'll try our hand at the American Fact Finder. Let's see if we can see if we can get it to work. So I'll select factfinder2.census.gov. And now's a good time to get a drink of water. Okay, it worked. <laughs> Geographies. Okay. Now I'm going to try all blocks within Tomball City. So <clears throat> the first query, um, my potential match is the match I was looking for. All blocks within Tomball City, Texas. I will select it, add it, close the geography window, and now I can select any of the data sets that I want. Um, again, I don't want to. We don't want to view the, the blocks in Tomball City because that, that may that may bog the machine down. Did everybody see that? So um, let me let's let's just do a basic search. Yes. If you had searched for all Tracks within Tomball City. What would it have done? Did I did I type in Harris? Yes, you did. Gosh. When you don't rehearse something. No results. Yeah, it, it understands geographic relationships, and um, you know, and even when you when you select all tracks within Harris County, Texas, if you choose a 2010 data set, it's now going to give you 2010 tracks. If you choose a 2000 data set, it's going to return 2000 tracks. So it um, it understands the geographic link with linkages between the two different data sets. Yes. Can I ask a very basic question, and and you know I'm not a statistician or how tracks are defined and what what makes them tracks? I mean, tracks are roughly fifteen hundred eight thousand people, average of four thousand. Um, we um, we give. I think we gave HGAC the opportunity to, to refine our census tracks. Tracks are something that we want to be stable over time in order to compare. Um, so every census, we look at the population of the tracks, and we generally split them or merge them, but try to maintain boundaries that are that are equivocated over time. Um, so in, in 2008 or 9 or so, um, you know, we had 2,000 tracks for Harris County, um, 2,000 tracks for the whole state. Um, we asked HJC to take a look at those tracks, and based on their population, do they meet the population requirements? If they don't, split them or merge them, but enable them to, to be able to be put back together to compare over time. Does, does that make sense? That was a lot. That was a lot of words. Um, 
So, um, you know, there's something we want stable over that time, but we want them to evolve as the population changes. But we do give uh, local governments the opportunity to, to have an input in, as to how they change. Are there any other? Any other? Yes? Got to use the mic, sorry. My question is, uh, how much consistency is between uh, census data and also American Community Survey data? Between the 2010 census and the American yeah. Community Survey, um, they, are, they are very different. <laughs> so if, if, you, if you look at the population for Houston in the 2010 census and you look at the American Community Survey, they are probably very different. Um, one's based on a sample. The American Community Survey is based on sample data where the 2010 census is um, as accurate as we can in 100% count. Um, so what do you suggest if um, that how to just change the set of data we would be better for us to use? Well, um, what our data folks recommend is, is the ACS is used to compare areas, um, not to get a number or a count. This area has higher income than that area. Um, you know, this area is has more mobility than another area. It's not, um, they recommend that, that our, and I'm not a statistician, this is just what, I, what I've learned. It's really recommended to do comparisons, where if you need a count, it's to use the 20 census. Thank you. Any other, any other questions? No more questions? Let me, uh, let me try something basic here. You know, they're, they're, if, you, if you do a tutorial on the American Fact Finder 2, it's, it's, it's going to instruct you to, to press every one of these buttons and click every one of these drop downs. And um, I find that very time consuming. One way you can get information really quickly is just by going to the geography and typing in Tomball City, Texas. And, and it, it brings up the data sets instantly. Um, when I first learned how to use this system, I would, I would, I would go to geographies, go get a drink of water. <laughs> Oops, I have it open. Okay. I would select... Um, you know, I would, let, me go, let me go down to geographies here. I would select the state, and then it would filter the data. I'd select county, it would filter the data again, and it would narrow down to all the cities within, within Harris County, and I'd select Tomball, um, because that's what the tutorial told me to do. But um, once you get used to making some basic queries, you can get the information really quickly. So this fall, uh, the American Community Survey will be releasing more data. Um, I believe the one-year data just came out. Um, what's really interesting to me, and probably many of you, is the five-year data, because the five-year data goes down to the block group level. Uh, the data that came out in 2010 uh, was based on 2,000 geography. I know that sounds weird, but um, this year, the ACS five-year data will go down to the track and block group level, but it will be based on 2010 geography. So um, that should hopefully make things easier once you, you, you create a geographic data set. For 2010 blocks, you can maintain that as the, as the ACS data changes and not have to go back to 2000. Um, and this may be outside your purview because it's, um, I'm from the East Coast and it just occurred to me when we were talking about the difference between data that's available for cities and counties. And there are a lot of cities and towns in Virginia that aren't actually part of counties. They're unincorporated, they're independent. Um, but I think, and I'm not very familiar with it, 
I believe that like Williamsburg, Virginia, which is an independent city, is aligned with James City County for census purposes. Yeah. So does that information then all get a, their tracks would then be yeah. coming under James um, County information? And again, I mean, I can it it, it should be it should be correctly integrated based on how the geography nests. And again, I'm not I'm not familiar with the East Coast. Um, I know in Texas we don't have that. Um, you know, in Texas we have. We have cities, we have counties. We also have what are called census designated places, which are unincorporated cities that, that wanted data. But um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, if the geography nests, the relationships maintained, and, and if, if block, you know, you should be able to get blocks on any of those areas. But we can, we can test that. Any, any other questions? How many city and county governments do we have here today? One back there, two, anybody else? Um, you know, regardless of what's going on with the census, you know, we're, you know, the 2010 census is over. We're conducting surveys every year. We're, we're working on the American Community Survey, uh, the current population survey, which determines the unemployment rate. You know, there's always, you know, many, many surveys going on. but. But we have to tabulate that data to the correct geography. So um, if you folks are involved with the BAS program, we have a BAS, I'm sorry, I'm using acronyms here, Boundary and Annexation Survey. We have a BAS contact for every city and every county. It's still very important to fill those out. It's very important to look at those maps. Because when we release the American Community Survey, you know, for Harris County, for, for Houston, we're going to use the boundaries that, that have been provided to us. And if they're not provided to us, then, then the data is not as good. Anything else? Any, any geography census topics? Okay. Shall I look straight ahead or? <laughs> About to be gesture. unemployed, look. Can you make a gesture and talk to your... Okay. <laughs> not, not that formal. Should I just hold the mic or something? Yeah, okay. just have a conversation. Okay. There will be a 2020 census at some point. <laughs> any, other, any other questions or topics? I hope that, um, I hope I at least showed everyone that wants to work with our data that you need to go out and you need to get the ge geographic data. There are a couple ways to get the, you know, the census data. Although I didn't, I didn't show every in and out. Um, but I hope that you now have a sense of, of what's involved, and you'll at least give us a call uh, while we still exist, so we can help you. Yep. Yes, ma'am. Uh, correct. Um, last year, no, every data but tracked and block groups last year is tabulated to the 2010 geography. Due to time constraints um, in the way we process our data, last year when the, the first five-year estimates came out at the block group level, they were, they were linked to 2,000 geography, so 2,000 tracks and 2,000 block groups. From this year forward, all data sets will be will be tabulated to the 2010 geography. Anything else? Did you? Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when you create the census tract boundary, do you look at the land use data, for example, like some subdivisions? Where's the boundary of those? Uh, you just look at the, um, the, the local, local network and also the population within that track. Do you consider some land use, boundary, significant land use boundary when you create that? When we created them? Yeah, we, um, we left that up to the, the, the folks that, that did the delineations. Is there anyone here from HGAC that worked on the, the track delineations? Um, so, yeah. Yes, so, um, you know, they, 
they provided, you know, they, they used their information uh, based on some projected numbers, I believe, that we provided to, to make the track changes. And if, um, if they made changes that didn't correspond with, with our numbers, then they had to provide justification. So this, this area has grown, it's grown by this much and so forth. So did I answer your question? I'm sorry if I... <laughs> The data is, I mean, it is right after 2010, the data is outdated because things on the ground are changing. There's new houses being built. Um, and unfortunately, we don't do it, we only do it every 10 years. So it, it, you know, tracks that are growing, we need to split, but unfortunately, we can't, we can't split them for 10 years. Um, my second, another question is, our census um, bureau consider um, the creating some interactive GIS map to interpret the data on the website because we are not all users have to download them, but uh, with in, um, like an interactive GIS software, uh, people can just uh, bring the layers uh, on the website. That, um, let me get a drink real quick. That is, that is where we're going. Um, that's not where I'm going, but that is where the that's <laughs> that is where the bureau's going. Um, everything that we've learned um, within the last year, the money that's been approved for for all the geography programs in the census, the whole idea now is is to get away from you know you downloading data. It's web services, it's um, you know it's KML files. Um, when we work with governments, um, if, if you were involved in Luca or other programs, you know it was very tedious, very. Um, very difficult to update our files. They are working. Um, the ideas have been thrown out about using web services, and you actually go in and interactively make the change over a web service. So that is, um, again, being a federal agency, we're always a, a couple years behind. But that that is exactly where the researchers are going now. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Yes. Thank you all so much for having me. I appreciate being here. Um, again, if, if, if you need anything at all, um, anything at all from us, if you have any questions, give us a call in Dallas and we'll, we'll do anything we can. Thank you.